Russian media today reported National Security Agency leaker Edward Snowden now has obtained a document allowing him to enter Russia that allows him to leave the transit zone of Moscow's airport where he spent the last month. But Snowden's attorney said he'll remain at the airport for now until his asylum status in Russia is finalized. The issue is not yet resolved. Edward Snowden hasn't been denied asylum status, but unfortunately the current situation is a truly unique one for Russia. We have to account for the bureaucracy involved in the process so his documents are still being looked over. In Washington, a State Department spokeswoman said Snowden's movement from the airport would be deeply disappointing. She said Secretary of State John Kerry discussed the matter with Russia's foreign minister today. The leader of Egypt's military called today for mass demonstrations to show he has popular support to confront ongoing violence. The army chief urged Egyptians to demonstrate on Friday in support of the army and police forces. The military has been cracking down on loyalists to President Mohamed Morsi since it removed him from power earlier this month. I would like to call all the Egyptians to take to the streets to remind the whole world of the Egyptian will and decision. Therefore, I would like you to take to the streets to show the world that you are giving the military and police a mandate to put an end to the violence and terrorism. Morsi's Muslim Brotherhood responded by saying the general's call was an open invitation to civil war. They plan their own demonstrations on the same day. In another development, the Obama administration said it has delayed the sale of four F-16 fighter jets to Egypt in the wake of Morsi's ouster. The announcement did not mention more than a billion dollars in other military assistance. A train derailed in northwestern Spain today, killing at least 35 people. Some 50 people were injured. It occurred near a train station in Santiago de Compostola, as thousands of pilgrims were traveling there for a Christian festival tomorrow. There was no immediate word on what caused the derailment. Police in India today arrested the principal of the school, attended by 23 children who died last week after eating contaminated school lunches. Tests showed cooking oil used to prepare the meals contained high levels of pesticide. It was purchased from a shop owned by the principal's husband. Forty-seven children in all fell ill after consuming the meal. President Obama has nominated Caroline Kennedy to be the next U.S. ambassador to Japan. The daughter of late President John F. Kennedy was an important early supporter of Mr. Obama's 2008 campaign for the White House. If confirmed by the Senate, Kennedy would be the first woman to serve as the American envoy in Japan. In Washington, House lawmakers moved today to act on a measure that would nullify the National Security Agency's authority to collect phone records of millions of Americans. It was the first time Congress has taken up the issue since the recent leaks about the NSA's secret surveillance programs. Meanwhile, National, Se National Intelligence Director James Clapper became the latest administration official to say the amendment would unwisely end a critical counterterrorism program. Also in Congress today, the father of slain teenager Trayvon Martin appeared before a special caucus on race. The group, convened by black lawmakers, hopes to focus more attention on issues disproportionately affecting black men and boys. They gathered just days after President Obama insisted the nation has to do some soul-searching in the wake of the Florida shooting. Today, Tracy Martin praised the president for opening a new national dialogue. It sparks the conversation in, in every household over the dinner table. And that conversation is, what can we do as parents? What can we do as men? What can we do as, as fathers? What can we do as mentors to uh, stop this from, from happening to your child? Um, and, and I think that's where the conversation begins. Martin said he wants to channel his family's tragedy into something positive. He and his wife have established the Trayvon Martin Foundation to address issues facing African American men. Stocks were mixed on Wall Street today after several disappointing corporate earnings reports. The Dow Jones Industrial Average lost 25 points to close at 15,542. The Nasdaq rose a fraction of a point to close at 3579. The Duke and Duchess of Cambridge revealed the name of their son today, George Alexander Louis. He was born on Monday weighing 8 pounds, 6 ounces. Kensington Palace officials said the prince, who is third in line to the British throne, will be known as His Royal Highness Prince George of Cambridge. Those are some of the day's major stories. Now back to Judy.